we will start with uh, James Tew, who is manager of the Treasury Board of uh, Canada. That is his first partici participation to the World Policy Conference that will give his personal perspective on why is it difficult to change. So James, sure. go ahead. Merci Patrick. Thank you everyone here today. My name is James Stewie, I'm from Ottawa, Canada. I'm a dad of three kids, ages five, three, and one. I will reinforce the fact that I'm speaking on my uh, personal opinions today, not speaking on behalf of the government of Canada. Je ferai la présentation en anglais aujourd'hui. Je suis bien capable de prendre mes questions en français plus, plus tard, si vous voulez. Encore, je suis ici en parlant uh, de mes opinions, pas du gouvernement de Canada. So we're gonna, I'm going to very quickly take a look at two things. One is to look at the climate change and climate adaptation in Canada to set the scene. But also then to really look at the problématique. Why is it that we feel so unable to address this issue? So in Canada, we have roughly 10 million square kilometers. We have a fair bit of climate. So we are seeing a fair bit of that climate changing. It's a fact. We know that the north of Canada is changing at twice the rate. It's warming up at twice the rate as the south of Canada. We see more extreme heat, less extreme cold. We see more drought, thawing permafrost. There's been a marked shift away from rain, from snowfall, pardon me, to rainfall. I grew up on the east coast of Canada, a tough, rugged, beautiful part of the country tucked in next to the North Atlantic. When I was young, we had snow. We had snow on the ground for months and months. This past year, friends and family who are still there told me that it snowed a handful of times. A good buddy of mine said he shoveled three times. The city now in Halifax, Nova Scotia, is experimenting and adapting by planting palm trees, palm trees in Canada. So in fact, we've moved beyond the conversation of climate change to that of climate adaptation. It's not that the climate is changing, it is not a question, it is that it is, and what are we going to do about it? And what I think has been really, really very positive from this dialogue over the last few days, and as, as Patrick just mentioned, it feels collectively like we have come to a, a consensus. Right? We've moved past this idea, you know, doubting climate change, that in fact we need to do something. Policymakers, governments, Businesses are all seeing these impacts. Businesses are seeing that ultimately their costs are increasing due to regulatory costs, or you know, perhaps they're seeing that their built infrastructure is now at climate risk. And this is the problematique. So we have, we have come to this place. We have seen governments try to do things, and, and we're gonna have a discussion about the situation in France in a few moments. But there's resistance. And we ask ourselves in this room and, and, and in other rooms similar to this, you know, what's, what's wrong? Can't people see? Climate change is a fact. What's wrong? And why is there that resistance? It reminds me about our 2015 and 2016 conversations about Trump. In rooms like this all over the world, we had come to a consensus. The man can't win. He's a reality TV show star. Just, just wait and see. If, if they think he can win, well, they just don't get it. The fact of the matter is, I think today is just another case where we don't get it. We don't understand the lived realities of 99% of the population most of the time. We forget that 99% of the population are not in this room today. They're not actively thinking about climate change or how it's going to impact them, impact the food chains, about security. The single mom who works two jobs doesn't come home at the end of the day and think about rising sea temperatures. She comes home and she thinks about having made it through another day and that she's okay and her kids are okay. She works her butt off, but she feels like she's not getting ahead. And arguably, she isn't. And she never has been. She worries about her safety and the safety of her children. And beyond that, not much else matters. And so it comes down to this, the people being asked or being told to adjust their behaviors because of climate change or climate adaptation are the same people who have felt as though the rules of the game have been dictated to them for their whole lives. Most people know that climate change is real. They're not, I mean, you may find some people who still don't believe it. 
But ultimately, if you're worried about making it through the day, you're less worried about tomorrow. Never mind what your country's greenhouse gas emissions will be in 2030 or 2050. So I actually don't think it's reasonable that we sit and think or assume that people will just submit to changes in taxes, higher prices, submit to their behaviors being changed because of climate change. And this is the challenge. Traditional policy approaches are not working as we'd like them to. And so with all this self-reflection, and again, in this room and like many others uh, similar to it, we have, we have come to this place where we have accepted this. But I, but I do think our self-reflection actually harkens back to the 2015, 2016 uh, conversations about Trump. Well, can't they see? It's an emergency. Why won't they change? And frankly, I think people can see. They can see that someone who thinks perhaps they're smarter than them is trying to tell them how to live their lives. Therein lies the resistance. And this is tough. It's a tough message, personally, for me to deliver. Because I know climate change is real, and I know it's going to impact my life. But it's going to impact the lives of my children. I just think we need to find another way to go about the conversation, and most importantly, to bring more people into it. Thank you very much. Thank you.